Russian and Diamonds nil, Nunny Burrow one. The man of the match is Liam Dolan, the bully, bully man. And uh, Liam, you've been through the football wars for many years, and uh, today the football gods is not kind to Diamonds. So that we can't learn from <laughs> Ultimately, we've just hit the table because of life after the season ends, 40 games, was it? We're disappointed, gutted, everything that. Uh, one thing I will say is we'll give credit to our church. They pushed us all the way and they've done it, so fair play to them. But we're absolutely devastated. I mean, we've just spoken there. Today hasn't cost us a playoff spot. The last month has. We haven't defended or done well in both boxes, attacking-wise, for the last month or so. So yeah, we're not we're not blaming blaming anyone. But it is one of those things. But hopefully we can bounce back from it. I mean. What a fantastic group of players we've had. I mean, after four games, nobody would have even given us a sniff of the playoffs. We've took it all away, but unfortunately, we've fell short, and that, ultimately, that's where we are. Like I say, the table doesn't lie at this stage of the season. So, but there's a lot of young boys in that change room that will have good careers. Hopefully, they're here. And um, just senior players, management, just got to make sure we pick them up and hopefully go again next season. Like you said, Liam, it's been a fantastic season overall, really, for AFC Rush for the Diamonds. But right now, it, it hurts, I'm sure. It's hard to break the hotel. It is, yeah. I mean, I'm probably the most happy person I've ever been there. Do you know what I mean? I've been here the longest. And I honestly thought this season was the best squad we had. And injuries and whatnot, people can talk about that throughout the season, players even. We still had enough of that just for approximately. Monday at St. Ives. How did practice go then on uh, Thursday? Training was fine. On it, it really was. Everyone was buzzing. We thought we'd put that behind us. But in those two games, St. Ives would say we haven't made the keeper work enough. And ultimately, you have to score goals to pick up points, and we haven't done that. So we got what we deserve. Does uh, training uh, normally go for about a couple of hours? Or how does that take? Yeah, so we get we get there at seven ish and we, we train till nine. So yeah, we, we spoke about the game and what Nanit and would bring and then we go out and train. So uh, like I say, it's not about Nanit and it's about us and also we haven't been good enough. 
Uh, right before the end of the match today, you did give uh, Tony Breeden, the goalkeeper, a bit of a go there. <laughs> yeah. that, uh, I'm, I'm sure you were just in the intensity of the moment. Yeah, yes. Um, uh, like I said, I don't hear anyone say it's wrong, so I just feel like the people say it's just good. It's good. Yeah. Uh, it's probably not a good time to ask you this, but do you hope to be back uh, playing again with Diamonds next season, or do you see yourself in a coaching role eventually? I still want to play football. Yeah. Hopefully the manager still wants me, but who knows? Football's a funny game. I'm going to stand here and say, definitely stay in. Because the manager of course I want to stay in. But football's on the phone, thrown out, whatever. Gaffer might have his own ideas and whatnot, but look, if one did, I'll be here. Thanks for joining us after today's game. I understand you must be quite upset, quite disappointed. How, how would you summarise today as a whole? Not good, not good enough. I just I think we weren't good enough. I don't think we've been good enough perhaps over the last six weeks, especially in both penalty areas. We haven't defended well enough. We haven't stopped goals going in anywhere near good enough. Um, and we haven't been ruthless enough um, in, in the opposition penalty box. And I think that was true today. You know, Balls have gone across. We haven't had a great deal of chances, but you know Connor's put a brilliant corner in, and the ball's bounced in the six-yard box, and it's a it's a tap in for somebody, one or two others. Is, but you know it's yeah, bitterly disappointing, um, frustrating, all of the above, um, and it's and it's difficult at this moment in time to draw to draw too many positives. We well, mentioned how. We've not lost it today. We've lost it over the last few weeks, and we were just speaking out off camera. Do you think that it's it's we haven't turned those draws into wins because we've not lost a, a many games since you've been here? Do you think it's the fact that we've not turned those draws into three points? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, totally. You know, we've we've drawn far too many games, um, and that that you know that shows that you, you you know again it's it's what happens at both ends of the pitch, um, and we have we have to be better with that and. Um, there's been lots and lots of examples when, you know, we've needed to defend our box. You know, Monday, Monday is a prime example about defending. Just defend a corner, and you draw nil nil, and, and that's that's the difference between winning and losing. And um, you have to be, we have to be f far more aggressive. We have to be far more ruthless in both penalty areas because uh, goals win games, goals change games. It, it's, it's all about scoring and not conceding goals. So, bitterly disappointing. Um, and uh, it's further compounded the way it's happened in terms of we've dropped out of the playoffs on the last day of the season, and, and again that that hurts. So um, yeah, disappointed. We've obviously had to do, deal with a few blows in terms of Ty going to Ketrin, obviously Ravi and, and Alex getting injured as well. Um, Jordan Gray wasn't in the squad today. Was that an injury concern? Yeah, again, it, you know, he played two games in three days on the weekend, and again, maybe that we should have managed that better. But you think. You know he, he was fine in, in himself to go again Monday, and and you think go and get, you know try and get the job done on Monday. Um, so yeah, listen, I've said before the group's had loads of trauma, loads and loads of trauma. And in fairness to it, to the to the group, they haven't used that as an excuse. They haven't waved the white flag. They've kept going. They've stuck together. Um, lesser clubs or lesser teams would certainly have, have rolled over when they lose a player who, you know, a centre forward who scored so many goals, a wide player who scored goals and created goals, and 
and, it, and is a huge influence. You know, Jordan, Alex, obviously, Alex has been a, a massive Messi captain. Yeah, he was leading goal scorer when, you know, since I've been at the club when he, when he went out. He's massive in the defending penalty area. So there has been huge trauma, and I don't, not, I hate excuses. I'm not one for excuses, but we have to do, we do have to look for some reasons. Um, and, and we do have to, to look why we haven't quite got over the line. But I don't think, I'm a firm believer, and we spoke, I said in the dressing room, the league table doesn't lie at the end of the season. I think, I think we've been the sixth best team in the league this season. Mm. Uh, uh, and I think Banbury have been the best, and et cetera, et cetera. And, um, for a football, as a football club, it's progression. I think as the season's gone on, I think everyone's told me, you know, middle of October 17th and, and maybe facing a relegation scrap. So, listen, there's loads and loads of good things to look back on this season. Lots of good things. The progression of some players, the likes of Paddy, you know, Casey, Will Jones has finished the season well, things like that. Um, and I'll be raw tonight and I'll be hurting tonight. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm focusing on 2022, 2023 and... and and that means progression for this football club again. So that means being better than finishing six next season. And that's what my focus will be. That's what my aim will be. Um, and I'll do everything I possibly can to make that happen. Yeah, it's certainly got to look ahead to next year. There's nothing we can do about it now. But let's just touch on the game quickly. It was certainly a, a game with very few chances, particularly in the first half. But I suppose we were always going to come on stronger after we went 1-0 down, knowing we had to go and get the goal. Do you think that there was a bit of nervousness that just got on top of the players in the end? Yeah, I think first half we looked, we looked a little nervous. Whether it's nerves, whether it was a little bit of, you know, trepidation. I thought we looked a bit frightened. I said at half time we looked like scared to, to get on the ball, scared to do. We, we were doing things first half which weren't us. We were doing things that we were not good at. It, you know, players were doing, players who were good at dribbling were, were, were passing the ball, and vice versa. You know, we were just not, not really at the races. But at nil nil, <coughs> you, you know, it's it's. It was it was fairly comfortable, and then the goal looked far too soft. Obviously, I've not seen it back. The goal looked really soft. It was, you know, a poor defensive header. Not picked up the second again today, and it's been a theme theme over the last six six weeks. And probably to be fair, since I've come in, the units, the the, the space on the pitch, were, were massive, far too big. Um, there was there was you know we were far too deep at times and. Uh, there was no connectivity between, you know, the back four midfield and and, and, the, and the front. So, and I thought that the goal is is a prime example of that. Um, and we just went in at half time and said, you know, we need a spark now. We need, to, you know, people need to to stand up and be counted and 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 and, and be brave. We needed bravery. Um, and you know, we came back into it last 20 minutes and we we had one or two half opportunities. Obviously, Bully was offside for his. Another couple have flashed and we've had one or two other chances, but. Um, ultimately, we haven't been good enough to win the game, and that's, uh, that's a, a, a bit of disappointment. It's obviously a very raw feeling right now. It's going to feel like that for a while, but when you look back on it as a whole, and certainly perhaps in a few months' time when we look back on this season, I'm, I'm sure well, as a football club, if we were offered six before the year, we would have took it, especially back in October. It, it, it's, it just feels like a real sucker punch knowing yeah. that you know we're, we're disappointed with sixth place, and, and that goes to show how far the club's come. Yeah, as I said before, progression. You know, football's about progression and being better than you know. I think last full season was it ninth or something like that. Yeah, ninth. Yeah. The club finished. We finished sixth this season. So yeah, it's you know as you say you know as when the season started and and, and time went on and um, and, the, and the season develops, you sort of get you know get into the the sort of routine of things and routine of winning, the habit of winning and the habit of being successful and doing better and, and all of a sudden things open up and opportunities look like they're going to arise for you and you know, we've been in the playoffs all the way since I've been here until today and that's the that as I said before that that compounds it even more and and, fro uh, and throws even more into the into the pot of, of how disappointed we are today um, so yeah well I know it's a very horrible feeling so we will let you go but just want to say thank you for everything you've done for the club since you've been in there's a lot of positive things going on like you say, so you know, I hope you have a really good summer and we'll push on again next year and hopefully you'll go. Again. I don't need love.